Thank you for joining me on the patio here in southern Spain on a beautiful winter's day where I am sleeveless. I know, I know, this is the time of year it would be risky business to go sleeveless, but we have a Lelia Perinii to repot. And I'm a little bit nervous <laughs> because the key word being winter and this orchid grows her roots in the winter. And I did say last winter, this orchid is due for a repot, but I'm going to wait until next winter which is this winter and repot her because she has a very straight rhizome <laughs> there is no bending bending even with light training we're gonna do something about that at least we're going to try and the reason I really don't want to be doing this this time of year despite the orchid telling me it's go time is because my winter conditions are not exactly ideal for what she likes if she were out in nature I hope to get into some care tips with you about Lelia perinia but maybe Mainly, this is the repot session, and if I forget to say anything, check your screen. I will be putting up pointers about her care on the screen as I dive into this pot and see what we are up against. Now, let's get to repotting a long overdue Lelia perinii, who is not a generous root grower. Yikes! <laughs> And before we even get into the repot, let me talk about pests because I have a visual reminder right here. My Lelia perinii is a magnet for scale, not because she is not doing well, but she is just a magnet for scale. So we dealt with that with my handy dandy garlic alcohol. Love the stuff, works every time. We just have to be vigilant for it to be a continuous repellent and pest treatment and to keep our orchids safe. That's the only thing with these organic or let's say homemade tinctures that help us out to keep our orchids safe from pests. The repetition, the reapplication, the being on top of things is paramount for them to be effective. So she was pretty clean. I just saw another little cluster down there. And while she's in the pot, it's better to do it now because when she's back in the pot, I'm trying to use the same size again. I don't have a square pot long enough, big enough for that rhizome. So I'm going to try and fandangle something. We'll get into that when I get her out of the pot. But yeah, while she's in the pot, it's easier to wipe the leaves, clean her up. Because again, this orchid is not a generous root grower. For me, probably two, maybe three roots. And that is positive thinking. And she doesn't branch readily either. So being a warm grower all these things pertaining to winter you see where i'm coming from with the apprehension about repotting her this time of year while today is beautiful doesn't mean that the next three months are going to continue like this and she needs a lot a lot of light which she normally gets during my winters here in southern Spain. We do get a lot of sunshine, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to have sunny days all the way through to March. And her biggest light exposure comes during the winter. So you can see, because she's an active root growth, she is not a winter rester. She rests after she's done blooming. And that is usually July, August, September. That is where she's resting. If you are cultivating a Lelia perinii or are interested in a Lelia perinii, and you want to do it in a wet dry cycle know that the warmest months of the year are the months where you would then back off watering as mine is in Lekka and self-watering my media doesn't go dry but I stop fertilizing after she's finished blooming now that she's an active growth yes I've soaked her in calcium and magnesium prior to this repot but I'm also going to be fertilizing her while she is producing roots so it's a bit of a dance her temperature levels should not go below 12 degrees Celsius which is awesome because my indoor temperatures don't drop below 14 degrees Celsius fingers crossed that it stays that way and I don't jinx it and we get some really nasty weather coming up. So thankfully any evaporative cooling that could happen in the pot is not going to affect my Lelia perinii because I am two three degrees above her all-time low preference which is 12 degrees celsius so we're doing quite well now with all that being said let's get into the pot and see what we are up against. I already know there is a root growing into the reservoir 
I pinched it, even though it was nice and green, but I pinched it a little bit to see if it was viable and I squashed it. So we're probably losing that root where I pinched it. Very delicate root system. <laughs> and if I keep repeating that, well, the repetition is because it is quite important for this orchid and to keep that in mind. Right, now let's get into that pot. Okay. I guess we're gonna do a little bit of squeezing. I'm hoping not to need the hammer. Let's tilt the pot away from that root tip and see what comes out. Before we squeeze, because every squeeze is also, yeah, unfortunately an abrasion to what could be a viable root in the pot. So I'm always very cautious with squeezing. I mean, push comes to shove. We're gonna be doing the hammer and the yanking. And then thankfully we've got the new roots starting to grow and hopefully we're not stressing this orchid out to such a degree that she's gonna sulk she's not a sulker I mean you know we have some sulking orchids this one is not some one of those that I found to be sulking but she has roots right up against the edge here yeah there so we're gonna have to get our knife out let's take care of that and yes, I'm putting her down, even though I've got a root growing out of the bottom of the pot. But as I mentioned, I already squeezed that, so it's gonna go anyway. How pedantic are you? Oh boy, very, very, very pedantic roots. Right up against the pot, even after an hour, an hour and a half soak. Okay, we just get past one and there was a crack. So we may lose some of those. Ooh, really, it's a little merry-go-around here. Seeing as they don't branch, they grow very, very long. But I'm liking what I'm seeing. After two years in the pot, I'm liking what I'm seeing. The roots are holding up nicely. She is not one that is notorious for dumping her roots, but still. You can see that I've never achieved to grow back the structures the size they were when she came. She has already been divided once and the division collapsed once the new growth started to gain some size. It just goes to show that these thin structures are not exactly very good for divisions. I had five bulbs to work with on her division, so I thought that would be plenty as opposed to what we know three bulbs should be the ideal. So I gave this orchid five structures and still the division collapsed before any roots started. And, well, that munching thing here, that is courtesy of Siliano. Back in the day when I didn't know how far his neck would reach <laughs> to my orchid leaves. I have learned my lesson. I now know the distance that he can cover with his neck when he sticks it out of his outdoor jungle gym. Right, I think we're ready to get the orchid out. Keep your fingers crossed. I would appreciate that. And, oh my goodness, speaking of fingers crossed, you know, instead of this hand gesture, YouTube has this hand gesture or this hand gesture. So whichever one of the two you would like to do for this video, I would appreciate it if you would tap either the thumbs up or the thumbs down. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, it would be amazing to have you on board. I would love it if you would also subscribe to the channel. Thank you ever so grateful for that support. Now let's see. You're gonna come out, please. Please don't make this awkward. Please don't make this difficult. And now I'm glad I'm in short sleeves because I'm starting to perspire a little bit. Nurse, nurse, dab the forehead. I don't need the hammer because she's loose. I think she's just holding on because of the microfiber in the bottom. But I want that support as well. Goodness me, girl. I'm talking to the orchid. I am far from a girl. <laughs> I'm more like a prune by this day and age. I'm like the season, late fall, early winter. <laughs> Let's go. Oh. Perfect. And that gives me the answer that I was kind of looking for as well. 
On the surface, all I could see was large lecker, but I can see I used mixed lecker. There's large and small in here. So I am going to get myself my storage tub of small lecker to add to the storage tub of large lecker that I already have so that we can do the same mix seeing as she really, really enjoyed that. As you can see by this amazing root system. Wow, wow, wow. We even achieved some branching. That is insane. That is great news. That is more than I had expected. Yay. Oh, goodness me. I'm glad I'm doing this on a day like this. Looks like the lecker is falling out nicely. Makes our life so much easier. <laughs> I'll just be a little bit more careful. I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm way excited about this stage. Yeah, we have to do some cleanup. And I wonder if this network, because it's not a bendy bendy root system, even though it's soaking wet, if this network is going to allow me to do what I want to do with the rhizome, so I can put her in the same size pot. Otherwise, huh, I may have to visit a garden center and see if I can't get a bigger pot. But you see, it seems a bit silly to get a bigger pot for a root system that, well, you can see three, two years here, two years to get an oversized pot just to fit the rhizome. I mean, if needs must, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Madam here comes from Brazil, if I didn't mention that before. Low regions of Espiritu Santo and Rio de Janeiro. When I say low regions, I'm talking about rainforests, beautiful area probably, 700, 900 meters. So she is definitely, she likes her warmth. And her blooms, although they're very pretty and they smell gorgeous, they're not long lasting. If you get 10 days out of a Lelia perinii, then you are very, very lucky. I usually get seven where they look pristine and then they look a little bit shabby and then they fall off. And that's why I say 10 days. They're not perfect for 10 days. They do take their time to wilt and fall off. So <laughs> I include that because to grow an orchid for seven days of blooming, shame, that root really kinked and it was actively growing. Oh, que lastima. But yes, yeah, so grow an orchid that does pretty much nothing for eight months, you would think. Well, let me correct that. Now, we've got at least three months of root growth. The root system doesn't grow very fast, but it is in active growth. And then you think nothing is happening if you don't see your roots growing. And then suddenly, end of May, maybe mid-June, a new growth will start. It'll grow very, very quickly. It will bloom, and then it goes into its rest phase. You can see how much space was in between the roots and the leka. So it's not like I'm trying to trim the roots off in order to get more oxygenation flow going. The health and climate of the pot was absolutely ideal because she's not a happy root grower. But still, as long as I have easy access to the roots I'm trimming off, I am going to do that as best as possible just for my own little fiddle time because, you know, I need a repot fix. And this is awesome. <laughs> Before I keep chopping away, I want to show you the previous growths. And you can see that she has like one, two, three on the root there for that growth. And then it's like one, two, you know, again, one and two roots per new growth. But I'm not going to chop these off because they are actually viable going down. How long they will stay that way, don't know doesn't matter because they're not going to interfere with the health and the climate of the pot, as you can see. Oxygen exchange, gas exchange, flushing, everything. Everything has plenty of space. 
She's an OG in my collection, meaning this collection here, she came in 2018. She has been a reliable bloomer for a species that isn't exactly, let's say, in the best climate here with me winter-wise when it comes to light. That's the only thing, light. She would prefer much more light than I'm able to provide. Other than that, I would say this was a lucky buy. Well, and <laughs> the short time of her bloom's bloom. But who doesn't like an orchid that at least is a reliable bloomer. Now, it could be that after this repot, she says, yeah, no, not gonna bloom for you in 2024. And that wouldn't matter to me at all because the fact that she is just there as a structure in my collection in a pot during the summer wouldn't make a bit of difference as long as she's gonna be happy. And then I don't have to worry about her for the next three years if the cultivation continues the way it has been going in the past years. And I don't see why not because I don't supplement with lights anymore. I don't use a heater. And if she can sustain those conditions, well, she's a keeper. Let's see what we're up against and give her a little bit of a hose down. Mindful of the root tip. During the winter months, maybe you're in a hemisphere where you only have rainy season and a non-rainy season. During the non-rainy season, of course, the orchid will adapt, acclimate to the fact that she needs that dry period. So I wouldn't worry about watering her if you have those kind of conditions. If you've got a dry spell, just keep checking the rhizomes, keep checking the pseudobulbs, and if they look a little bit wrinkled for you from what you're accustomed to, a little trickle of water won't hurt. But this is obviously like a wet dry cycle if nature does that for you where you grow your orchids. They talk about her as a medium sized growing Lelia, and I'm like, yeah, no, she's not. At least mine wasn't. Now she is because I cannot get her to grow those structures back. They're really, really long structures. Now she's a medium size, but you will be surprised if you think you've got space for this one and then they say medium, you're like, yeah, I can accommodate that size. You may get one that can stand 40 centimeters. So I would consider that already quite a large orchid in my opinion when it comes to tall structures but the beauty about this is that she does grow upright even though she has somewhat of a lengthy rhizome it's not that exaggerated it's an okay length to deal with to handle it's just that the pot size keeps getting bigger and bigger because madam here won't branch so what I want to do with the rhizome if I can and I can't I can't the rhizome is so so stiff I can't bend it. I was going to try and see if I could bend it in a direction, wire it, and then have the pot size accommodate the wired rhizome, making the whole lower structure shorter, but no. So I'm going to have to rummage around in the shed and see what I can come up with. Oh dear, I don't want an XXL size pot for this one, simply because it's going to look really ridiculous. I'm not concerned about space in the grow space at the moment, especially seeing as she can go down to 12. I don't want to. She doesn't come outside during the winter months, but she has a very, very high light space up against the glass during the winter months. And oh, a huge pot like that with stumpy growths. I mean, if the growths were this size, I wouldn't mind, but the ratio is gonna look dumb. Still, it's got to be done. Let me see what I've got and I'll be right back. This is going to work. Oh, I may risk some roots because I'm bending them. I'm really putting a lot of tension on them, but I like the diagonal. So yeah, we'll go with this square pot. It's a 17 by 17. Oh, actually for another orchid, but... <clears throat> Yeah, we'll see. Let's try this. <laughs> we can always change our mind. I've got a much bigger pot if I want to in a year's time. So we had two microfibers and that is what I prepared in the other pot, <laughs> assuming I could do what I was planning to do with the rhizome. Well, I have been schooled. So this is just me switching out the microfiber and preparing the square pot. The reason I really don't want to actually use this pot for this orchid, uh, anyway, it's because I can't get the white square masks anymore. They don't cater for them anymore. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Especially when you start to finally find something, which was the alternative to my round pots, my original setup with the round ones self-watering. Then I came across this option and lo and behold, two years 
later, they're not going to stock these square pots anymore. And I'm like, oh, oh goodness sake. I think they talk about it's not environmentally friendly. So they have other ones coming in. They are matte, I suppose maybe more environmentally friendly, but not square. I don't know. Well, I'll have to wait and see until spring what other things might be coming in new because new season. I'll have to wait and see. Alrighty, quick change of set. We have large lecker to the left and small lecker to the right. And here is our orchid. I've got the support to the back. If I break any roots, well, it is needs must in my case sometimes. <laughs> Maybe you have your similar situation where you're like, yeah, you know, we could turn the pot twist the roots down, etc., etc. Let me tell you, these roots are brittle. There is no twisty turny once they've kind of made their shape. It's just keep going, keep your fingers crossed, be gentle, and just get them in as best as possible. I have not added water yet because I just rinsed the roots off again and now i need to tie off my orchid to the support otherwise she is gonna go a wandering <laughs> you know once upon a time when i was young back in kenya i used to watch the older ladies pot up their orchids mine grew in my trees because i was a child i wasn't affording or paying or being able to buy pots so all my orchids went into the trees and the landscape Anyway, I was watching older ladies pot up their orchids and wire them in and I thought it was so ridiculous to have to wire a plant in and I just didn't like the look of the wires everywhere even though they are trying to make it look nice. It always made me feel a little awkward to see plants wired in. It just took away from the aesthetics, in my opinion. Well, I am that old lady now wiring orchids into a pot. <laughs> All right, let's add some water. And seeing as now I have a smaller pot than I actually had before, this is 17 centimeters and it's only working because it's a square and I've got the diagonal to work with. Previously, I had a 20 centimeter pot and now I'm kind of doubting I'm gonna put large lecker in because I'm not gonna be able to fill in the blanks. So I'm gonna go with only small lecker because it makes my life easier. I'm gonna let the water do the work for me, but in order to avoid as much gridlock as possible, that's gonna occur, I'm gonna be just putting the leka in in very small increments and shaking the pot in between every single time. And in two years, we will be able to assess how this root system coped with the stress of being fetched into a smaller perimeter pot. If I didn't mention it before, I had calcium magnesium at 300 parts per million because she is, you know, she reputably to be a medium-sized growing Lelia. I don't want to be stingy because she needs a lot of help because of my conditions. And I will continue to fertilize her now with 200 parts per million in the reservoir, whereas I would prefer to give her 300, but again, I'm dialing it down because of my conditions. And the fact that she is a slow grower when it comes to root systems so I don't want to have any salt buildup to stress her out while new roots grow. I will be monitoring that and it would be awesome if you were around to watch the update videos and see how things are balancing out and how she's going to cope with what just happened to her. I'm going to have her access the fertilizer from below. I don't want any fertilizer water going in through the top. That will be flushing only. Clean RO water will only go in through the top because I don't want any kind of, let's say, ambient air, the dryness in the air, lack of humidity to evaporate the fertilizer too soon. And then I've got salt buildup right out of the gate on the surface of my pot. So that was 200 parts per million of fertilizer that she has access to. And now we wait <laughs> and we shall be watching the root growth. It's gonna be like watching paint dry. <laughs> Thank you if you've watched the video to the end. I appreciate your support so, so much. I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.